Hello, friends. Nowadays, it's hard to find an adult or a child who hasn't heard of LEGO. It's the most recognizable toy brand in the world, upon which countless clones have been created over the past 50 years, all somehow echoing the idea of connecting plastic bricks. It's even hard to believe, but as of today, so many have been produced that there are roughly 62 original bricks for every person on the planet. LEGO Company annually releases dozens of brochures, books, and magazines dedicated to the construction set, including collector's buildings with a complete catalog of released sets and detailed descriptions. It's impossible to count how many times the name LEGO has been mentioned in the pages of the Guinness Book of Records. This is considering that it is replenished annually with all new achievements. Today, LEGO is not just a construction set. LEGO is history. A history of ups and downs, as well as the history of a whole culture. And if someone thinks that the path to the top of the toy world was easy, it's far from it. I think you should definitely find out where it all began, how this company actually started, and who came up with those legendary LEGO bricks. Old Kirk Christensen the founder of the Lego company was born in 1891 in the small village of Fjorsk in Norway, in a large family of farmers. He was the tenth child, but very much awaited. His father and mother gave him a good education up to the level of high school, and already in his teenage years, the guy got a job at a local factory, where, after just a few days of training, he easily mastered carpentry and joinery. Since the family was very large, the earnings in the native town were meager. Gathering all his strength, the guy, not yet of legal age, set out in search of a better life abroad. He walked to Germany, where he made ends meet with the most basic work, from helping around farms to repairing shoes and clothes or making wooden furniture. Every day he gained experience and made new acquaintances. But regardless, he couldn't settle in a new place, and closer to his twenties, Kirk set out again. The life of a young man at the beginning of the 20th century was far from easy, so he often had to change jobs. Plus, the First World War made itself felt throughout Europe, which also complicated the life of the poor guy. Wandering from place to place, closer to his 20s, Kirk set off for Norway in search of a better life and greater earnings. Perhaps the guy wouldn't have stayed there for long either, but by the will of fate, it was in Norway that he met a girl named Kirsten. As often happens, he fell head over heels in love with her. Seeing her for the first time, he instantly understood that they were simply meant to be together, and, by the way, he was absolutely right. Soon the girl agreed to marry Kirk. In order to provide for the young family, the man did what he knew. Specifically, he opened his first workshop, where he assembled and made furniture for farmers. He did the work with quality, took orders for a couple of months ahead, and it seemed that gradually everything in life was getting better. But unexpectedly, in 1924, a fire broke out in the workshop, destroying everything inside. The cause of the fire was never established, but Kirk was sure that it was probably due to competition. Not willing to tempt fate twice and reopen his business in Norway, he gathered all his earnings together with his wife, and they returned to his native village. By 1932, when old Kirk was already 41 years old, he became the father of four beautiful sons and a loving husband. During this time, he worked in a small workshop for a local entrepreneur, assembling furniture for him. However, in the midst of the Great Depression, he lost his job again, forcing him to relocate his family in order to make ends meet. He once again opened his large workshop in his barn, where he started making the most basic wooden items like ladders, ironing boards, and various wooden parts. Things didn't go as well as he would have liked, with very few orders coming in, but he could live with that. After all, he had his beloved wife by his side, who always supported him. However, very soon our hero would have to endure a very difficult period. On one ordinary day, for unknown reasons, his loving wife Kirsten died from an unknown illness, which took her life in just a few days. With four young sons depending on him and having experienced such a tragedy himself, the poor father needed help. But since he was now the sole caregiver for his boys, he decided to somehow alleviate their grief associated with the loss of their mother. It is under these very tragic circumstances that the huge Lego corporation begins its development. But before that, there was still a long way to go. Every day, 
Kirk crafted wooden toys for his boys, trying to somehow make their everyday life without their wife and mother more diverse. Of course, there wasn't enough money to make ends meet, and Kirk had to look for new ways to earn a living for his large family. That's when those toys came into play. One evening, sitting by the fireplace, Kirk watched as one of his sons played with a wooden boat on the floor. It was then that he realized that there was still a high demand for such goods even during the crisis. And since he had all the tools and knowledge for woodworking, he decided to start making toys at home. Of course, he couldn't do it alone. So he enlisted the help of his eldest son, who was 15 years old, with whom they spent days arguing and cutting out wooden fishing rods, primitive cars, Christmas trees, and anything else that came to mind. I understand that just producing toys wasn't enough. They needed to sell them somewhere. This is where 12-year-old Godfred Kirk Christensen, Kirk's third son, joined the family business. Besides contributing ideas for craftsmanship, he became the main salesman. All sales depended on him. He ventured out onto busier streets and stood there for hours in search of potential buyers. The family's goods were in demand because a significant difference from other craftsmen's toys was that old Kirk, his eldest son, could spend hours fussing over small details, carefully cutting and assembling them. During those difficult times, there was no toy market as such. All you could see were wooden figures that would be considered terrifying for a modern child and certainly not enjoyable. Thus, day by day, the family began to receive more and more individual orders from local wealthy people who wanted to give their children the very best. The family's product was exactly that in their town. But the sales didn't stop there. More and more people started coming to Kirk from other cities, buying his products and reselling them there. Realizing that Ol couldn't handle the workload alone anymore, in 1934, he hired a small team of seven employees. Thus, through collaborative efforts and developments, the first small line of toys was born. As expected, by that time, other craftsmen were also not standing still. Everyone wanted to grab a small piece of the market, so many began to counterfeit Kirk's toys, paying special attention to details. But Kirk quickly realized what needed to be done to stay afloat and stand out from the crowd. The master decided to give his toys a unique name that would immediately distinguish his products from others. All workshop employees were tasked with suggesting their own options for the name. Officially, the legend of the name was created by Kirk himself. The reward for the most successful naming option was supposed to be a bottle of homemade wine. Looking at it, the words, Why God, came to Kirk's mind, which translates from Danish as, Play Well. He combined two letters from each word and got the abbreviation Lego. Several years later, he learned that the word Lego translates as I study or I assemble. Obviously, this had a significant impact on the company's future history. The famous Lego logo, consisting of white lettering with a yellow outline on a red background, appeared much later, specifically in 1973. From 1935 to 1940, the company released the famous wooden wheeled boat and a new toy, the Mona Lisa's Smile Puzzle, which became the main product of the year. This was the first line of toys released under the branded name Lego. The workshop's main motto became Kirk's own expression, which translates as, only better is good enough. Gradually, the company's fortunes began to improve, and within two years, Lego had a good customer base and a sizable assortment of various wooden toys. However, in 1940, a fire destroyed the company's only warehouse, which stored toys worth a significant sum of money. Almost everything was burned, even affecting some of the equipment that the craftsmen worked on. The cause of the fire was never determined. Despite this setback, Old Kirk handled the problem quickly and efficiently. In a short period of time, with the help of his employees, he rebuilt the workshop and changed the production process. By 1943, the total number of LEGO company employees had reached 40, and a year later, Old Kirk registered the company and its own brand to ensure that the toy production process was fast and of high quality. In 1946, the Kirks, including his son Godfred, purchased expensive equipment for the production of plastic toys and small parts for them. 
The first experimental models, including a series of plastic animals, were exported to India. Also, the first wooden blocks with numbers and letters on the sides and the educational game Monopoly were put on sale. However, until 1947, despite some successes and sales growth, Lego was just one of many toy manufacturing companies. Almost all factories were doing the same thing. It was in 1947, two years after the end of World War II, that an event occurred that forever changed not only the Lego company but possibly the entire global toy industry. By chance, during one of his trips to England, Kirk came across Kittacraft toy building blocks developed and patented by a British company. The studs on top and hollow undersides of the pieces immediately caught the master's eye. These blocks inspired him so much that upon returning home, he embarked on a similar venture, and the company began producing experimental toy building blocks. Of course, this was not yet the famous Lego brick. Firstly, the first version of the construction set was entirely made of wood, and secondly, special tubes to enhance the stability of the built structures were missing. Moreover, sales did not justify themselves, nobody understood what to do with them or how to play with them. Children refused to buy such toys, and adults were not thrilled either. Therefore, the idea of the construction set was put on hold for the time being. But as time marched on, the market dictated its conditions, and every company fought for its customer. Wooden toys quickly became obsolete and short-lived. Gradually, starting in the 1950s, the Lego company also began smoothly transitioning from wood to a new material, plastic. Godfred, the company's vice president and old Kirk's son, is credited with the flourishing of the Lego company, as he proposed bringing back the abandoned construction set into production and giving it a new life by producing it from plastic. Although it was a bit challenging for old Kirk to concede to his son, as the first experience with this construction set had been a failure, he still trusted him. By 1953, the company began large-scale sales of complete sets of construction sets. And a year later, in 1954, it received its first trademark, Lego Marston, which was printed inside each piece. In 1955, the company officially launched the Lego system of play, a toy world consisting of 28 sets and 8 toy cars. These novelties were first showcased at toy fairs in Nuremberg, Germany. However, the company's founder, Old Kirk, did not live to see the time when his creation conquered the world. In 1958, he passed away at the age of 66, and the entire management of the family business passed into the hands of his son, Gottfried, who aimed to continue his father's legacy. In 1958, the world's first patented system of interlocking blocks, studs and tubes, was also introduced, making the models more stable. In the same year, fans could get acquainted with the first and only piece at that time, the sloped roof tile, in another construction set box, which instantly became the most demanded part of the playset. Until February 4, 1960, LEGO produced toys both from plastic and wood, with the ratio being approximately 50 to 50. The fire in the workshop that occurred on that day seemed like an unbelievable incident, but it was the third time the company faced such a disaster. Lightning struck the building housing the wooden workshop and warehouses of wooden toys, and once again, everything burned to the ground. After this event, Godfred made a difficult decision for the company, he decided not to rebuild the burned down workshop and instead focus entirely on manufacturing plastic toys. Expanding the workforce to 500 people, he gradually phased out wood production, replacing it with plastic. In 1962, Godfred found a loophole and began massive imports of his toys to the United States, doubling the company's profits due to a significant increase in consumer demand. Instructions with detailed descriptions of how to assemble the constructor into various shapes of buildings and vehicles began to appear in boxes with plastic blocks. In 1966, the number of employees increased to 600, and in the same year, the famous Lego Duplo series, designed for toddlers, was introduced. A year later, the LEGO Technic series for older children was launched. Throughout his years of work, Gottfred Kirk Christensen worked diligently on one idea, 
to develop his own gaming system by combining all the toys into a small universe. He personally conducted surveys among buyers to learn the strengths and weaknesses of his sets. LEGO reached a new level in the late 1960s, gaining recognition from hundreds of thousands of people around the world. On June 7, 1968, the first amusement park called Legoland opened on a 59-hectare site. In 1979, Gottfred Kirk Christensen passed the presidency to his son, Kirk Christensen, who held the position until 2004. Under his leadership, the first themed Lego space set was released, which became a prototype for creating many other thematic collections. Kirk also proposed the idea of miniature plastic character figures, which became a standard component in each new Lego set. In the 1980s, the company introduced a new line of Lego Technic toys, including bolts, gears, pins, and built-in electric motors. During this period, the first official world championship in Lego assembly was held, laying the foundation for the creative era of Lego. In the 1990s, Lego began producing sets for building robots on its Lego Mindstorms software platform. In 1992, Lego set two Guinness World Records, building a 545-meter-long railway in a castle made of 400,000 bricks. From 1997 to 2000, the company became very productive. The first Lego Imagination Center and Lego Mindstorms Educational Center opened in Disneyland in the USA. The company also began actively releasing themed sets dedicated to characters from famous movies such as Lego Star Wars, Harry Potter, and many others. In the early 2000s, the situation began to change for Lego. With the increasing popularity of computer games, Lego sets started to lose their appeal. However, the company was forced to react quickly to these changes. The new hired president of the company, Jorgen Vig Nutstorp, developed a strategy that included opening factories in Switzerland and improving production in Denmark, Hungary, and the Czech Republic. He also focused on licensing Lego parks and optimized their operation to reduce expenses. Later, the production of proprietary software and interactive games was launched to introduce new opportunities to Lego. As a result of collaboration with the company F1, sets with details for building racing cars appeared on the market. However, the greatest success came with the movie, The Lego Movie, which grossed billions and restored recognition and love for the legendary constructor. Thanks to Jorgen's efforts, the Lego brand quickly began to regain its former glory. In 2008, the company launched an online platform where users could suggest their ideas for themed sets of constructors and receive 1% of each order. By 2011, Lego held a 7.1% share of the global toy market, and in 2015, it became the world's largest toy manufacturer with total sales volume of $2.1 billion. However, this was not the end, in 2016, the profit reached $6 billion, and the total number of employees worldwide grew to 19,000 people. LEGO has always stood out for its uniqueness and creativity. In May 2013, the largest X-Wing model in 1.1 scale was presented in New York, created from more than 500 million LEGO pieces. Another achievement was a 34-meter tower and many other records, such as the Batman Cave, built by two devoted fans consisting of 20,000 pieces, and much more. Interestingly, the recreation of the Battle of Helm's Deep from the Lord of the Rings trilogy in 2013 became one of the significant moments for LEGO. It took a whopping 150,000 pieces for this project, and designer Michael Doyle built a castle from 200,000 pieces, which is truly impressive. For many, Lego is not just a construction toy, it's associated with childhood, with carefree hours spent building, and with the best times in life. But looking back at the history of this iconic brand, you can see that it all started with a small workshop of a carpenter who sought to improve his own and his children's lives. After the loss of his wife, who meant everything to old Kirk, he did not despair but found the strength and a unique idea that brought him billions in revenue and provided jobs for many people worldwide. It's a story of how one person was able to change his life and the lives of many others, creating a legacy that will last for generations.
Interestingly, LEGO remains one of the few European brands that remain in the family ownership of the founders, not being sold for many years. British analysts and construction set buyers note that those who invested in LEGO 15 years ago are now earning more than those who invested their savings in gold or stocks. For example, a construction set from the Star Wars series called the Millennium Falcon, which cost only £42 in 2007, can now be purchased for a whopping £2,700 each. It seems that Lego, like fine whiskey, only increases in value over time. I haven't had the chance to be a happy owner of Lego sets, but I've heard many positive reviews about this brand. It seems that LEGO is truly unique with its quality and ability to capture the attention of both children and adults. Friends, that's all for today. Share your comments, have you ever had the pleasure of being a happy owner of LEGO sets? Also, don't forget to rate this video. See you soon.